Hello everyone. It's like I'm just gonna say hi this way. But huh, we'll be talking about like scene composition in today's video because I think that there were some questions about like the way I compose my dioramas in medium. And I thought I'll make a video to just kind of address uh, my general process for it. Alright, let's just dive into it. Okay, so we have the picture frame here and you have the character plus kind of like an environment backdrop. So as people always say, it takes to the tango, right? So I made him a friend in advance. And I'm just gonna move this first guy here and his friend. I'm just make him a bit smaller just to discreet distinguish them on the right hand side. So in this sense we actually kind of have created a feedback loop. You know, from um, oops, left to right, actually, or right to left, depending on like how you want to view the thing. Let's just draw a quick one here. Yeah, arrows are true. So left to right, right to left, small feedback loop. But since we're already in kind of a pretty cool 3D space anyway, why not just take advantage of it? So in this sense, I actually came out with a little method on my own kind of help um, drive the virtual comp uh, virtual compositions actually a bit better. So I have the basic shapes actually. You have your triangle, circle, and square. We're going through the triangle kind of layout method first. Okay. Just erase this. So, um, we just like kind of take a slow pan around this diorama that I did earlier this year. It's kind of based off my bus interchange in real life, except that maybe I changed a bit of the, the way the props are running in the scene. But we do have a main object here with a, actually the main character here followed by the secondary characters so I'm just gonna plot out like ways that your eyes can hop between these uh, different characters so starting from this little bird maybe I'll just draw it with the line constraint be a bit neater this guy here to here and you can have him bounce from here to the little bird and from here if you take a look down you can actually bounce the bird's eye view to the cat just make it a bit more accurate and from the cat you can actually bounce it back to the guy so in essence right this itself whoops this a little triangle. If you have to look here, see the cat, and you can go up to the cat, look at the guy, and from here, the bird can look at the both of them. So this is kind of um, one way how I kind of think about how the scene might be laid out first, and rearrange my characters accordingly. So just to recap, this is the triangle method. But there are many ways to kind of like um, rearrange them, but I won't be showing it here. But we'll be moving on to the circle in a moment. Okay, so here is the second scene, which is the circular kind of composition stuff that I'm talking about. Might not be so obvious here first, but before that, let us just take a very slow pan around the scene just to orientate ourselves and yes this is based on real life situation where I saw like chickens actually running around in the park with people sitting on the benches and I thought it would be pretty pretty funny to have a scene like this so uh, we have this little guy over here is a bit more simplified we have two kind of um, things looking at each other so we have the chicken staring back up at the guy, like this, and 
the other way around. And th this itself, I'm just gonna disregard this other bird here because I don't think it's actually an important part of the scene at all. It's just there because it was thought like this kind of a friend. But the primary way I, I, I think this scene works is kind of like this. It's like a little loop by itself. Even if you look at it from like the zoom out point of view, this is how it kind of operates in my opinion. And yeah, that's it. This is really kind of like the circular loop that I perceive. And we'll just move on to the next one in a moment. Okay, so in this third scene, you're probably wondering like, where's the rectangle or square? that I was talking about because it clearly looks like a rectangle, I mean triangle here. Yes, that is part of the equation I personally feel, but in VR, your backdrops are also as important as your kind of supporting characters here. So in, in the way I look at this thing, I feel like the ship is actually kind of a huge part of the entire scene composition itself. Okay, maybe it's not such a, so much of a square but a bit more of a rectangle. But if, if I were to zoom out a bit, you can see like the way I laid it out is like this. This guy followed by the ship and these two other characters here in the scene. And within this, I kind of built like a triangle to just have that little feedback loop. So um, for larger scenes like this, I guess um, it's, it's actually a better idea to kind of just move, take a character and just kind of move it around in the scene first and try out like different ways to look through the camera. Because in VR it is pretty easy to just kind of like just pan around and actually test your compositions and stuff before actually committing to locking your camera in your render engine of choice. So yeah, I hope this short video gives you a little insight in like how I lay out my scenes and feel free to reach out to me or let me know if you have um, further questions on this and I would like to definitely find out more about like how the rest of my VR friends lay out their scenes. Okay, till the next video. Thank you and see you.